I've been listening to Plastic Free by Beth Terry on Audible, and I gotta say that Plastic really, really sucks. And this book has been a good reminder for me that it is just everywhere. I mean, our technology is made out of plastic, even our furniture, a lot of it is now made out of plastic, our food is wrapped in plastic, and then that plastic is wrapped in even more plastic. And at this point, our food even contains plastic if you eat marine life. But even our bodies are wrapped in plastic. I mean, considering how popular synthetic materials are, we are plastic. But are synthetic fabrics really as bad as we think they are? We're gonna find out today because I'm gonna be breaking down the fashion industry's deadliest fabrics. But first, a huge thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. Obviously, audiobooks are a much more eco-friendly option, but I love audiobooks because girl doesn't have time to read, and this is so great, especially now in the summer. You can listen to audiobooks while you're at the beach, going on road trips, on hikes, or running, or if you don't really have a social life like me, just while you're doing your house chores. Audible membership includes one free audiobook every month, exclusive sales, and you get 30% off all regularly priced audiobooks and they also have a great listener guarantee so if you listen to something and you don't like it you can just swap it with something else and like i said in the beginning i've been listening to plastic free by beth terry and it's helped me a lot with the research for this video but also i'm just learning a tremendous amount of things from this audiobook it's easy to listen to so i highly recommend you check it out so to start your 30-day trial today and get one audiobook for free go to audible.com slash kristen leo and if you're a us listener text kristen leo to 500 500 that is audible.com slash kristen leo or text kristen leo to 500 500 to get started so thank you so much audible and back to talking about deadly fabrics last year i learned so much about synthetic fabrics while i was attending echo fashion week australia and there i found out that synthetic fabrics are basically dominating the fashion industry they consist of a lot more than 60% of global fabric production and it's estimated that by 2025 that percentage is going to go up to 98%. Okay, that's interesting, but what is so bad about synthetic fabrics? Well, the biggest problem with synthetic fabrics are microplastics. Microplastics are shed off of all synthetic materials, especially the low quality cheap ones, every time they are washed. Those microplastics enter our water sources, they end up in our seas, in our oceans, they start absorbing toxins, and they end up being consumed by plankton organisms that afterwards are consumed by fish, that are afterwards consumed by humans that eat sea life. But that's not the only problem. They are polluting our oceans and they are having a devastatingly negative effect on sea life. About 90% of all sea life is gone because of us and microplastics are making it worse. Thousands of tons of microplastics enter our seas and oceans every year and synthetic fabrics are a considerable source of those microplastics. Another problem is that materials like acrylic, polyester, and nylon are not biodegradable, which means there are no microorganisms evolved to break them down. Once they are created, they are here forever pretty much. Synthetic materials are also a byproduct of the oil industry, which a lot of us would consider a pretty problematic industry and also a very environmentally polluting industry. The only plus side of this is that synthetic materials are affordable, but that also means that they are a favorite of fast fashion brands because they are so cheap, and that means that even more synthetic fabrics are produced than we really need because the fashion industry is known for creating way more clothes than any of us need. So perhaps choosing cotton over synthetic is better? Well, cotton is biodegradable at least, but the production of cotton requires huge amounts of water. About three quarters of global cotton production is heavily irrigated, which leads to drought, which has even led to entire lakes 
drying out. And then we also have the ethical issue that arises where it's been uncovered that even in organic cotton farms, slave labor has been used. I spoke about this in a video that I made for my blog channel about how Victoria's Secret was using organic cotton that had been harvested by slave labor. And then what about viscose? Viscose is created from wood pulp and about 30% of viscose and rayon comes from endangered and ancient forests that are either from Canada to Indonesia or Brazil. And it was actually uncovered that H&M and Zara were using viscose that came from these ancient forests. In 2014, they pledged that by 2017, they would have eliminated all endangered and ancient forest viscose from their production chain, but as much as I researched, I could not find any piece of information that would say that they actually reached that goal. Honestly, I'm not surprised at all. This is what fast fashion brands do. Every time that they're caught doing something wrong, they just make a pledge that by a certain amount of time, they're gonna improve things, when in reality, they just say that for good press and they do absolutely nothing because they know that everyone's gonna forget about it pretty soon. Another problem with viscose is that the production is very chemical heavy. It's been found that carbon disulfide, a chemical that is central to the process of viscose, can cause a lot of health problems, not only to the workers in the factories, but also the people living near the viscose plants. It's found that this chemical causes coronary heart disease, birth defects, skin conditions, and even cancer. A material that some sustainability blogs claim to be ethical is leather because it's more natural and can biodegrade. I highly disagree with this opinion. Just because something is more natural, has the ability to biodegrade, it does not make it more sustainable. I've made an entire video about leather that you can watch over here, but to kind of sum it up, I don't think that sustainability can in any way include murder. It's really not possible to contribute to the animal agriculture industry and be sustainable at the same time. It's found that livestock and its byproducts contribute to 51% of all global greenhouse gas emissions, which is huge. But also, if you think of it logically, what is more sustainable? to grow a plant and create fabric out of that plant, or to grow plants, transport those plants, feed them to animals, continue that cycle again until the animal is grown. Meanwhile, all the feces of the animal are polluting the environment, and then afterwards slaughtering that animal. And regardless if leather has been treated naturally or it has been treated with heavy chemicals that are also causing tremendous harm to the workers, processing that material, it still is an unsustainable fabric. And I can guarantee that if leather was made out of slaughtered kittens and dogs, no one would be calling it sustainable. We also have wool, which again, a few sustainability blogs are gonna claim it to be more sustainable. But again, the same rule applies as with leather. It's much more sustainable to take a plant and turn it into fabric then use plants and blah blah blah, same thing I said before. Another problem with wool is that sheep are actually bred to have skin folds because with more skin on them, that means they're producing more wool. And the problem with these skin folds is that a lot of pests also fester inside them. One of them is fly strike, and fly strike has led to a very savage practice being done on sheep, which is called mule sing. Mule sing is a mutilation practice where the sheep's skin and flesh is cut off. It's insanely disgusting and inhumane. Also, just like in the meat industry, when wool is produced on a mass production scale, a lot of animals end up getting abused and mistreated. And also all sheep are eventually slaughtered for meat, which means that we are contributing to the meat industry as well. Even though wool biodegrades, it's not the most sustainable material, but it does have the possibility of becoming a more ethical material, but only on a theoretical level. In order for wool to be produced ethically, that would mean the native breeds being raised on their native soil without being abused and without being slaughtered in the end. But that would eventually lead to the price of wool being extremely high, so it would never be able to be mass produced. 
and a lot of people would not be able to afford it. A kind of recent alternative to leather that is not plastic has been Pinatex, which to me seems really promising and I hope it does grow and become a lot more mainstream. So there are a few more sustainable and ethical material alternatives, but the problem with a lot of them is that they just can't keep up with mass production. Other than Pinatex, some other materials that seem promising are hemp. Hemp is quite a fantastic plant altogether. When it comes to fabric, it is biodegradable. It requires less water than cotton. It also produces three times more fiber per acre than cotton does. And hemp actually replenishes the soil that it grows in rather than extracting its nutrients, which is pretty awesome. And I do hope that this material becomes a lot more popular in the future. And then another more sustainable material is linen, and that is produced out of flax. It is biodegradable, it requires less water than cotton does to grow. It also doesn't need any chemical pesticides or fertilizers, which makes it very environmentally friendly. And also another great thing about linen is that it lowers your body temperature, especially in the summer, that's really useful, especially now with climate change and global warming. It is pretty useful, okay? I just cannot take this heat anymore. I need to thrift more linen stuff. So what is the solution to this? What is the best material? What should we avoid? Well, in my opinion, I don't think that boycotting is a solution here. I think this is an issue that can only be solved politically and regulations need to be in place that ensure that materials like microplastics do not seep into our water. And that can either be done through stricter regulations for garment quality production, or perhaps applying filters to water processing plants, or even regulations that all new washing machines that are created from now on will have to have a filter that is gonna process microplastics. And there are a few solutions that can be that can tackle this technologically but the best solution in my opinion is not just buying less of this material or less of that material it's just in general buying less of everything and cutting down our consumption of new materials especially when it comes to sustainability and environmentalism secondhand is by far the best option or supporting brands that use secondhand materials. Recycling has been presented as the solution that is gonna fix everything, but recycling isn't really realistic. It's kind of a, a scheme that brands like H&M are using to put the responsibility on us to take care of the planet while they destroy it. But recycling is not very practical because if a material is a blend of different types of materials, it can't be recycled. And most materials are blends, which means that a very tiny, tiny portion of fabrics being sent to get recycled actually get recycled. So the solution in many ways is cutting down on our consumption of new clothes, but also rallying on a political level and trying our best to kind of enforce regulations that are gonna protect our environment from our clothing. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video and found it useful. One thing that I definitely don't mention enough on this channel is how important it is to be active, not just by boycotting something, but also one of the most important and best ways to contribute to positive change is through political activism. And if you have the skills and the knowledge and the ability and the means to get involved politically and bring change in that way, there is no better way to contribute, in my opinion. A huge thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. You can check them out in the description box below. And a huge thank you to my patrons as well for supporting me. If you do wanna help me make more videos like this, then please do consider becoming a patron. The link is in the description box for that as well. Please like this video, subscribe, and share this video with as many people as possible because that helps a lot as well. And I'll see you all next week. Bye.